Hey guys, what's up? This is ETSKI Tutorials and this is FPS 1.7. In this episode we're going to learn how to add limited control to the player while they're flying through the air. So if they jump in the air and they try to run, they still will be able to move just a little bit, but not much. Um, so this is going to add a little bit of realism and also a little bit of a standard video game element to our game. Uh, because in real life, if you jump in the air and then you try to change directions, it's physically impossible. You can't change directions or change your acceleration while you're flying through the air. You need some sort of friction or something to push against to change your direction. But in video games, we want to add just a little bit of control. Now, technically, this is not realistic, but it's going to help a lot for, like, let's say if we're jumping from platform to platform, and you jump, and then you realize that you're off just a little bit, and you're going to miss the platform, it gives you just a little bit of leadway so you can kind of lean your player and just like give them just a little shove while they're flying through the air so that you know you don't feel like you know you can run while you're in the air because that's impossible but you at least have a little bit of control to make tiny adjustments so that you don't have to get your jumps perfectly and we're gonna be able to adjust this so that either you have a lot of control or you can set uh, set it to zero and have no control at all and have it more realistic so that when the players do jump from platform to platform, they have to have, you know, an exact technique to get from one platform to the other because there will be no room for error. So that depends on what kind of gameplay you want to set up. But the variable that we're going to be using in this episode is walk excel air ratio. Basically what we're going to be doing with this is multiplying it by uh, walk acceleration. So we're going to create an if statement before our line of code that we have right now that applies the movement to our player. So what is it? It's um, rigidbody.addForce, um, input.getAccess, vertical, um, and then the horizontal, and then we multiply it by walk acceleration. So we're going to add an if statement before that that says if grounded. So if we're touching the ground, it's going to use the exact same line of code. But then, after that, we're going to add an else statement. So that means if the previous if statement is false, it's going to run this line of code. So it, what it's going to do is, if we're not grounded, or grounded equals false, um, it's going to be the exact same line of code, except we're going to multiply walk acceleration by walk excel air ratio. Alright, so I had to write really, really small because I have a lot to write, so hopefully you can read it. Um, this line of code right here is what we already have inside of the update loop inside of the player movement script. So let's just go over it real quick. We have rigidbody.addRelativeForce. So we're adding force depending on which way our player is facing. So not depending on the world axis, but depending on our player axis. So when we press forward, we're going forward in the direction that we're looking. Um, so then we have on the x-axis walk acceleration times input dot get axis horizontal. So input dot get axis horizontal is going to give you either negative one, zero, or one, depending on pressing A and D. Um, and then we have zero on the y-axis, and then walk acceleration times input dot get axis vertical. So that's going to give you a negative one, zero, or one, depending on whether or not W and S are pressed. Um, and then both of input dot get axis vertical and horizontal will give you a number between negative 1 and 1 uh, if you're using a controller, so it will work the same way. Um, so yep, that is the line of code that we already have set in place. But what we're going to be adding is this if statement up here that says if grounded. So if our feet are touching the ground, we're going to run this line of code the exact same way it is running right now. But what we're going to be changing is this else. So if we are not grounded, so we could either write else or if grounded equals equals false or grounded exclamation mark which means not exclamation mark means not inside of if statements um, so basically if we are not grounded we're gonna run this line of code and this line of code is the exact same thing as this but instead of using simply walk acceleration we have walk acceleration times walk excel ratio so remember walk excel ratio is gonna be a number smaller than one but larger than zero so it's going to give us back a number when we multiply it by walk acceleration that is smaller than walk acceleration so we're going to be limiting the amount that we can actually accelerate when our feet are not touching the ground. So we have rigidbody.addRelativeForce just like up here 
walk acceleration times walk accel ratio times input dot get axis horizontal. So exact same thing as up here, except we're just adding a small number that we're multiplying this by just to make it really, really small. So we still have control in the same direction, but it's just smaller and we're limiting the control. And we have zero on the y-axis, then walk acceleration times walk accel ratio input dot get axis vertical. So pretty simple. Uh, we're just building off of the code that we already have and we're just limiting how large that number is going to be when our feet are not touching the ground. Um, and one more thing that I didn't mention yet is that this is actually going to fix one glitch that a couple people have mentioned in the comments and that's when you jump in the air and like let's say I jump towards this wall right here and I'm holding down forward it's gonna make you stick to that wall because what's happening is when you jump at a wall and you still have full control over the player when they're not touching the ground um, you jump, you go up to the wall, and then basically when you're holding down forward, you're adding force against the wall. So there's like friction between the player and the wall. So when the friction's there, it's just pushing you there, and the force is just pinning you there. So it, that's physics going, and then, you know, you can't move up or down because there's a constant force just pressing you against that wall. But now when our feet aren't touching the ground and you do the same thing, there's going to be a whole lot gentler force. There's still going to be a little force, but if you balance things out right, there's not going to be enough force to pin you against the wall. There might be enough force to like jump against the wall and then you'll slowly slide down, but there's not going to be enough force to actually stick you there and keep you there. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that we're going to be going over. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, there's one line of code that I wanted to change from the last episode. I experimented with it and I think it just works better. So in the last episode, what we did was, what did we do last episode? Okay, so what we did was we got rid of that slippery feeling and we added two smooth damp functions on the X and the Z axis to slow down the player when W, A, S, and D are not being pressed. So what I actually changed is now it will slow down the player constantly as long as their feet are touching the ground. So to compensate for that, we have to increase walk acceleration. So you're kind of always pushing against this friction that's slowing you down to a speed of zero. Um, it changes things up a little bit, but I think it makes it gives you more control uh, when you're changing directions. So if you're running one way and you want to quickly turn around and run the other way, things are even less slippery and you just have more control and it just feels more like your feet are sticking to the ground. So. This changes up the code a little, it's not completely necessary, but I'm going to show you how to do it on the computer. Um, so that'll be your guys' personal preference, whether you want to change that line of code or not. Um, so yeah, let's uh, head on to the computer and uh, go over everything we just talked about. Alright, here we are inside of Unity. Now let me actually demonstrate the problem that we're having right now. So you can run around, we're touching the ground, so of course you're going to have full control over your player and change directions at any time. But our problem is that when we jump in the air, you still have full control. So I can jump, I can run this way, and then I can change directions and go this way, but that's unrealistic. We don't have a jetpack or anything, so our player shouldn't be able to do that. So let's add a few simple lines of code to actually limit that. So we're going to go to the player movement script and... Here is the line of code that we have right now, and this is just constantly adding a relative force to our player based on our horizontal input and our vertical input, input and we're multiplying it by walk acceleration and time dot delta time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an if statement. Yeah, if grounded. So now this line of code is going to only be run when our feet are touching the ground. So let's do a quick test run and see if it works. I assume it's going to work. It's really simple. So, yep, I have no control. I'm pressing W, A, C, and D, and I am not changing directions at all. But that's not quite what we want. Like, this is very realistic. But let's say I were going to want to jump on that platform. I jump. Oh, but I overshot. So I'm trying to like change directions a little bit in the air but I just can't do it so let's add some code so that we do have just a little bit of control just to give a little 
bit of forgiveness to the player if they don't jump exactly where they want to go. So we're going to do var walk excel air ratio float equals 0 0.1. So we know that we want to have it be less than 1 but more than 0 because if it's 0 we're not going to have any air control at all. We're, it's going to be just like I showed you. You won't be able to change directions whatsoever. But if we were to set it to 1, you'd have full control. If we set it to a number larger than 1, then, well, you're going to be able to move even faster in the air than you are on the ground. So we're going to set it to 0.1 so that it is one-tenth the amount of control while we're in the air. So let's um, go ahead and copy and paste this line here. Oops, I want to put it right there. And now let's put an else statement. Now I'm just writing else because it's the simplest way. Because right now, uh, in this if statement, we have grounded, which is a boolean. So this can either be true or false. So, of course, if this isn't true, the only other thing it can be is false. Instead of else, I could also write if grounded whoops if uh, exc exclamation mark grounded the exclamation mark basically means not or I could write it if grounded does not equal true or if grounded equals false so there's a bunch of different ways that we can write it but the quickest way is else so else is going to refer to the last if statement so if grounded returns false, the uh, only other thing, it, or I mean, if, yeah, if this is false, this line of code isn't going to be run, so else is going to take over and run the next line of code. So we need to modify this and multiply it by walk excel error ratio. And we want to do that both on the x and z axis. Oops. And that should do it. Let's test it out and see if it works. So run, jump. And I have a little bit of control, but not a lot, which is what I wanted. So I have, there's a little bit of forgiveness there, so I can change directions but it's not to the point where it's an unrealistic amount like I can only change directions so much so if I'm going this way and I hold down the most I can do is come to a stop so we can adjust this like let's say we want even less air control I'm gonna leave it at this for now this seems pretty good so and uh, let's check out that glitch we were talking about so here we have a slightly slanted wall and before, when we didn't have any error ratio controlled, in order to run and hold down forward or just push in the direction of this wall, I would stick to the wall. So I'm going to go sideways so you can see better. So now let's see what happens. I don't stick to the wall. I slow down slightly, but I don't stick to it. So it feels a whole lot better. Um, so yeah, there we go. And now let me go over the one thing that I wanted to change. And that is over here. Alright, so here we have our line of code that says if W, A, S, and D are not being pressed and we're touching the ground, we're going to smooth damp the velocity on X and Z to zero. Um, so what I want to change it to is to always slow it down to zero as long as we're touching the ground. So uh, we're just going to have a slightly larger walk acceleration to compensate for that. But now it's always going to be slowing down so when we change directions it should feel a whole lot more grippy. So there's no transition of oh everything feels slippery and then as soon as I let go then that's when things slow down. It's just things are always slowing down. So like if I want to make a quick right turn, I, I do slide a little, but no more than a realistic amount. I feel a whole lot less like I'm running on ice. And I just have a whole lot more control this way. And I think it just feels a whole lot better. 
So that is a personal preference thing. You guys can change it or do whichever one you think feels better. I personally like this one better. I think it'll work more smoothly with a controller because a controller will give you, or a joystick will give you uh, a more variable amount. Um, so that'll work more smoothly with it. So instead of waiting for the joystick to reach zero, it's just going to always be moving, or it's always going to be smooth damping towards zero. Um, I just think it, it feels smoother and it feels a whole lot nicer. Um, the one last trick I want to show you is how to make a staircase like this. I got a request, somebody asked me how to make a staircase work. Um, it's not a perfect staircase because of one major problem. And you'll see I'm going up the stairs, oh, but then I fly over like a ramp. So it's not perfect, but at least you can walk up it smoothly and you can walk down it smoothly. Um, but, and then you just got to be careful of not flying over or maybe design your level so that you have a ceiling so that you don't, you know, fly off it like a ramp or don't put like ledges like that, which are difficult to land on. Um, maybe later on we can come up with some code that'll at least lessen that effect. Uh, but let me just show you real quick how I made these stairs. So I have each of these individual steps. And these are just simple cubes, but the only thing is I turn the box collider off. And I have an object in place, another cube, that I just turned invisible. So if I were to turn it visible, it would look like that. So it's in the same place as the stairs, but you can't see it. And so basically this is a nice smooth ramp, uh, and these stairs uh, won't actually interact with your player, they're just there to make it look like stairs and I just put a ramp in place. So yeah, there you have it. This has been FPS 1.7 uh, Don't forget to subscribe and as always have a good day and keep making games. See you guys later.